In this video, we're going to discuss the ways that lines can intersect in 3D. But before we do this, let's talk about how lines can intersect in 2D. So if we have a set of lines on an axis, how can they intersect? Well, one way is that we have one line that looks, say, like this, and one line that looks like this. Those lines can intersect, and we know how to find that point of intersection just by using a little bit of algebra. So, for example, if the blue line was y equals x plus 1, and the green line was y equals 2x minus 1, we would e easily be able to find the point of intersection algebraically by plugging one thing into the other. Is that the only way two lines can intersect in 2D? Well, what happens if those lines are parallel? So what happens if we have a line like this and a line like this, right? So let's let's just come up with an equation for that. Let's do y equals x plus 3 and y equals x minus 1. First of all, we know that these two lines are parallel because they have the same slope of 1. But how many points of intersection do they have? How many solutions do they have? Well, the answer should be none. They're parallel to each other. So my question for you is, what happens when we try to solve for that point of intersection in the same way we do it in the first one? So let's try it. The way we could do it, the easiest way I think to do it is just by substitution. So we can substitute one equation into the other, x plus 3 equals x minus 1, right? So we're just making the y's equal to each other, and then solve for x. And if we do this, we're going to move the x to the other side, and we're going to get x minus x, which is 0x, right? And if I move that 3 to the other side, it's going to end up with negative 4. 0x equals negative 4. That's an interesting equation. If we think about it, is there any value of x that could make that equation true? The answer is no, right? Because whatever I plug in for x, it's just going to be multiplied by 0. Another way to think about it is if we try to divide both sides by 0 right, to get rid of that zero somehow, you end up dividing by zero. We know we can't do that. That's an illegal operation in math, right? So we can't, we can't sort of divide by zero there. So we would say the conclusion we can come to here is that there is no solution. Okay, and it's because those lines are parallel. There is one third option as well. If we have two lines in 2D, but those lines are on top of each other. So they're the same equation. Sometimes they're disguised, right? Sometimes one of them might be y equals x plus 2. And if you multiply everything by 2, you can do like 2y equals 2x plus 4. This looks like a different equation, but when we divide both sides by 2, you see that it's actually the same equation, right? So this is another case where what's going to happen if we try to algebraically solve this? Well, basically what we're doing is we're setting x plus 2 equal x plus 2, right? The same equation equals itself. What do we get if we try to solve this? Well, I'll move the x to the other side and we'd end up with 0x. And I move the 2 to the other side, 0. And if we think about this, what type of solutions are we going to get? Well, what can we plug in here to make it equal 0? The answer is anything. No matter what I plug in here, it's going to be times 0, so this is going to be true. So I would say here that it has infinite solutions. So those are the three possible cases and the algebraic reasons why. We can either have one solution, which comes down to just a point, no solutions, because they're parallel, or infinite solutions, which are just the same line. So those are the three options. Do we have those same three options if we take the, gra uh, the equation into 3D? We do. We actually have the same options. Now I'm going to draw a 3D axis here. I'm actually going to use black for the axis. So if we have an X, a Y, and a Z axis, right, we can have two lines. So the first case was where two lines intersect, right? So we clearly can have that, where one line goes like this or something like that, one line goes like this, and they're going to intersect at one point. That is a valid case, right? We know that that's possible, even if those lines are floating around in 3D space. The second case, is that possible as well? Where if we have two lines and they can be parallel to each other? Yeah, of course. Blue line, green line, 
they can be parallel to each other. In that case, they're gonna have no solutions. Actually, I should write that here. So here there's gonna be one solution, one point of intersection. Here there's gonna be zero solutions, right? Uh, oh, I forgot to draw the z-axis here. Let's just draw that z-axis, just to, to highlight the fact that it's in 3D space. Uh, okay, do we have that third option where those lines are on top of each other? Oh, I should draw the z-axis as well. Yeah, we do, right? So those two lines can be like blue line, green line, right on top of each other. So again, in this case, we're going to have infinite solutions. Infinite solutions. And that's when they're on top of each other. We have a special name for this. Um, we call this collinear, usually. That's what we call it in 3D. So I'm actually going to label that collinear. Or another way we do it, actually we um, we can write it, is coincident. Coincident means they're on top of each other, same line. Coincident, collinear just refers to lines specifically. Coincident refers to anything, so lines, planes, or whatever. So those are two ways we can describe it. I'll put that one as well, coincident. Uh, this one, they were parallel. And that one, they were just intersecting at one point. There's not really a name for that besides intersecting at one point. Okay, let me put that actually intersect at one point. So are those the only three options in 3D? Well, the answer is no. If you think about it, is it possible to have two lines in 3D space not be parallel to each other, but completely miss each other? You can actually, right? Two lines in 3D space just floating around don't have to don't have to ever meet. They can completely miss each other. And we have a special name for two lines that do this, that just miss each other completely and are not parallel to each other. So let me just draw this like that. So it's like this. If you have a line like this floating out in space and you have another line floating out like this that sort of goes under it, for example. Those two lines aren't necessarily parallel, but they're not going to meet. We call those lines skew. S-K-E-W, skew lines. They're skewed to each other. They don't, they will never meet. And how many solutions do you think this has? Well, it also has zero solutions, right? Because they never meet. A solution means a point where they meet, a point, a line, or a plane where they meet, right? So that's the case where there are no solutions there. So there's actually a fourth case when we take lines into three dimensions. Now, the question is, if we know this, can we determine, if we're given two lines, can we determine which case we fall into here? Algebraically. We can do it, obviously, by plugging the equations into some sort of graphing software like GeoGebra 3D, but can we do that algebraically? And that's going to be sort of the, the goal for this section, is to be able to do all these things algebraically. So let's try the first example here. So, question one. So the first thing I'm going to do, hopefully you have the, the questions in front of you. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the equation in parametric form. Parametric form is generally what we want to do if we want to do something algebraic um, because working with the vectors and stuff aren't so easy. So this is going to be negative 3 plus uh, minus s. Oops. Negative 3 minus s is our first equation. Um, y is going to be 1 plus s. And z is going to be 4 plus 4s. So that's our line 1. I'll call that L1. L2 is x equals 1 minus 6t, y equals 4 minus t, and z equals 6 plus 6t. You notice these are two separate lines, so they actually have two separate parameters, right? One has t and one has s, and that will always be the case because these two lines are independent of each other and the parameters need to be different. So how do we find the point of intersection here? Well, you'll notice both of these equations, even though they have different parameters, they have something in common. Both equations have an x, both lines have an x equation, both lines have a y equation, both lines have a z equation. And we know at the point of intersection, these are going to be equal to this. So all we basically need to do is plug one equation into the other, right? 
So that's what we're going to do. We're going to plug maybe the x's into each other and see what happens. So let's try that. Let's start with the x's. So negative 3 minus s equals 1 minus 6t. I'm going to call this equation 1 just for our reference. We notice, though, that you have two variables in this equation, and you can't solve an equation when there's two variables. You need two equations to solve for two variables. So a second equation we can use is the y equations, right? If we set them equal to each other, we're going to end up with 1 plus s equals 4 minus t. Do we need to use the z equations? Not really, right? Because we have two equations and two unknowns. We should be able to use any two of those equations to solve it. So let's try that. Let's, so in order to solve this, I'm going to do some substitution. In equation 2, it's actually easier to solve for s, so I'm just going to do that. s is equal to 3 minus t. And then I'm going to plug that into equation 1. So I'm going to back substitute that over here. Negative 3 minus 3 minus t equals 1 minus 6t. Right? And now we can solve. Three, negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6 plus t equals 1 minus 6t. Um, and then I will bring the t to the other side. 7t equals 7. So t equals 1. Easy. So now that we know that t equals 1, what can we do with that? Well, we know our line 2 includes t's. So once we know t, we can just plug it in. We could also solve for s and plug it into this equation, but if we do it for this equation, we should be okay. So let's try that. Let's try that first at least. So t equals 1, therefore x equals um, 1 minus 6t is negative 5, y equals 4 minus 1 is 3, and z equals 6 plus 6 is 12. So that is apparently our point of intersection. Now, I said don't worry about the s's. But it's always a good idea to check to see if it works with the other equation. The thing is, stuff can get a little bit complicated algebraically. Sometimes it's not always obvious whether something doesn't have a solution or not. You might get some wacky stuff. So you should try it in the other equation as well. So in this case, s, if t is 1, s is going to be 2. So let's just do that. s is equal to 2. And remember, we're plugging it into L1 here, right? Because L1 is the one that contains the x's x equals negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5, y is 1 plus 2 is 3, z is 4 plus 4 times 2, which is 12. So it seems to work for both equations, so that means the line is on both equations. Therefore, the POI, or the solution, is negative 5, 3, 12. There we go. So that's our first case. Clearly here, the lines intersect at one point. So what happens if there's no solution, if there's skew, for example? Well, we can try the second question. Let's see what happens algebraically when we do that. So first, I'm going to write out the parametric form of the equations. There we go. Did a little time warp there, so you didn't have to watch me write those out. Now we're going to do the same substitution. So I'm going to do equation 1 is going to be with my x's, so negative 1 plus s equals 4 minus t. Equation 2 we can do with our y's, 3 plus 4s equals 17 plus 2t. Again, you don't have to use two equation, these two equations, you can use x and z, but let's try it. So let's say s is equal to 5 minus t. Sorry, my s's and 5's look sort of similar, but that's s equals 5 minus t. And let's plug that into the second equation. So 3 plus 4 times 5 minus t equals 17 plus 2t. And let's solve. So it's going to be 3 plus 20 minus 4t equals 17 plus 2t. Bring that 4t to the other side. We're going to end up with 6t. And on that side, we're going to end up with 6. So t is equal to 1. That's cool. And if we do this, s is going to equal 4. Right? If we plug that back in there. Here, I'll just put the arrows to show what we did. We plug where we plugged stuff in. So if that's the case, let's check to see if that works. So when t is equal to 1, um, we're using our second equation, our second line, this is going to be equal to 3. y is going to be equal to 20, or 17 plus 2, which is 19. z is going to be 30 minus 5, which is 25. Let's try with our s, which is 4. Let's try the same thing. x is, um, well, negative 1 plus s is 3. 
3 plus 4 times 4, 16, so that's 19. Cool. And so, so far, so good, right? Our z is 6 plus 5 times 4. 5 times 4 is 20, so 26. Ooh, what do you notice? Those coefficients, those, sorry, those parameters don't work for both equations. You'll notice there's an error here, right? The point doesn't work for z. We knew, we should have known it would work for x and y because that's what we did our equations with, right? We did it with x and y. That's how we came up with our parameters. So the solution worked for x and y, but it didn't work for z. If it doesn't work for z, it means those lines didn't intersect. We sort of came up with a fake answer. Now there is another way of checking, and that is by, instead of uh, plugging in for the solutions, you also could have plugged into equation three which would have been the z equation, 6 plus 5s equals 30 minus 5t, we could have plugged in our s and t values and see if it worked out. So let's try that right now. So 6 plus 5 times 4 is 20, equals 30 minus 5 times 1, which is 25. Right, so this is the same thing, basically. So 26 equals 25. Well, clearly that is not the case. So that means, therefore, no solutions. Okay? So that's how you know there's no solutions. Now, how do we know if the lines are parallel or not? Because it might be useful, even if there's no solutions, we know there's two cases where there can be no solutions, right? Where they're parallel or where they're skew. So how can we tell if they're parallel or skew, whether we're in the case here or the case here? Well, how do you know if two direction vectors are parallel? That's the question you should ask yourself, right? The two direction vectors we have here for these lines are uh, 1, 4, 5, and negative 1, 2, negative 5. What do we know about parallel vectors or vectors that are in the same direction? They should be multiples of each other, right? Are these two vectors multiples of each other? Well, to get the x values to, to multiply, you would need to multiply by negative 1. But that doesn't seem to work for the y values. If you multiply the y values by negative 1, you don't get negative 4 over here, you get 2. So because there's not a consistent multiple, they must not be parallel. Those are two skew lines. So if I asked you to identify what case this was, you could say skew because... Direction vectors, I'll put dv for direction vectors, are not multiples. Okay? There you go. So I'm going to skip, I'm going to actually skip example 3 because you'll get a similar idea, except the two lines will be parallel. What about question 4, though? Question 4 says um, they should be infinite solutions, they, they should be coincident. So the two lines should be essentially on top of each other. So let's see what happens when we try to solve these. Again, I'm going to speed up time so I can write down the parametric equation. So there we are. There's the, uh, the two equations as well as the three parametric equations for those two lines. So when I do this, when I solve this, I'm going to end up with s equals 1 minus 2t. I'm going to plug that into my second equation, and I'm going to get negative 2 minus 3 times 1 minus 2t equals negative 5 plus 6t. And if I solve this, I'm going to end up with negative 5, yeah, negative 5 plus 6t equals negative 5 plus 6t. Uh-oh, that's interesting. So if I try to solve, I'll bring the 5 to the other side, make it 0, bring that 6t to the other side, it's going to be basically 0t. I didn't really need to show that t, but I'm showing the t because it illustrates the fact that how many solutions are there here? Well, no matter what I plug in for t, it's going to be a solution to this problem, right? Because no matter what I plug into t, it's multiplied by 0, so it's going to give me the correct answer. So the, the solution we can put here is that t is just an element of real numbers, right? It can be any number, essentially. There is an infinite number of solutions. And if t can be an element of real numbers, that also tells us that s can be an element of real numbers, because if the solution to t here can be anything, the solution to s here can be anything. 
right? So S is an element of real numbers, right? If that's the case, it also means that is an element of real numbers for the same reason, right? I can plug in any value for S and any value for T here is gonna give me any value of like the, the Z value. So it applies to all three of them. And if that's the case, that means there are an infinite number of solutions because every value of T is valid. So therefore we have an infinite number of solutions, right? And we know the only way that this can be the case with two lines is if those two lines are on top of each other. So this is what it will look like if there's an infinite number of solutions.